Yo yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new league racing video on F123. This is WR Wait, round is name number 8 around what? Austria. And as you can see, it is wet conditions at the moment. The not enabled. Um, and yeah, as you can hear me say there, uh, the deer is, is enabled, Wait. but the grip is not enabled Wait, yet. Um, yeah, it's just very slippery at the moment. And that also makes the yeah, breaking points a <laughs> little bit tricky. Um, because usually in wet conditions, lap. you obviously arrive at the corner much slower um, than when the DRS is enabled. Anyway. So, yeah, first time. This season in WR though, we're finally leading the championship uh, 12 points ahead of Ismail Fassi and yeah, it took us a while to get into the championship lead. It was the same in PSL um, last season and this season again, so it seems to be a bit of a, uh, a habit that uh, we kind of have to play catch up in the championship, but uh, finally into the lead of the championship and Ismail Fassi seems to be our main championship threat at the moment. As I actually invalidate my cooking. first qualifying lap here in Austria in wet conditions. It's a 109 one, but yeah, as we go into the last Q1 lap, um, it's gonna be completely dry. Or maybe not completely dry, but it is slicks and a drying track. So everything that happened before this is gonna go into the bin. And this is the only lap that's really gonna matter in Q1. Five people are gonna drop out here. Uh, top 15 goes through into the Q2 shootout and as you can see I'm trying to find my way through here to get a lap in because there's only 20 seconds left and there are like 12 people that still have to start a lap so I had to get to the front there in order to get a clean lap in and yeah 10 seconds left as we cross the line so all those people behind us are gonna have slightly a slightly faster track but it's not gonna be a lot and everyone somehow made it yeah, it's gonna make me say somehow everyone made it, but I'm not sure if everyone is gonna have clean air though, so that might be a big effect here in Austria. Uh, quite a lot of high speed corners, but they will be getting it back through Slipstream as well. On the F1 games, uh, this dirty air effect is not quite as big as the Slipstream effect, so um, yeah, you might actually gain uh, quite a bit back from what you lose from the dirty air, so um, important to us though that we get a clean lap in without any mistakes and without any track limit invalidations. 104.5 from Tom Manley and yeah we're looking at 102s around this track for pole position. Uh, it's gonna be uh, between a 102.7 to a 102.9 I reckon. Um, as we go across the line it's gonna be a 104.5 and yeah track not up to right, full grip yet. So, um, PS Yopo, if I remember correctly, was a 1027. Very carefully. But that was on a, a different turn one. Uh, they raised the curb in turn one, so the track is around two tenths slower, more or less. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what lap time wise we're going to be doing today. Look at the penalties! P7, as Holy you can see shit. there. And, um, yeah, Duncan Hovland, Ben Sabukoni, Isvan Puki, Luke Smith, and Jack West have gone out in Q1. And. Q2 is gonna be full dry, of course. And yeah, onto our bank lap in Q2. We are new stars at the moment. Um, Austria, very short track, so you can easily do three runs in Q2. Maybe even do Q3, uh, three runs in Q3 um, because the track is so short. Pit lane is relatively short as well. Um, and yeah, that makes that you just can bump in a lot of laps in qualifying. So, first new set of tires here then. Softest compound available. Um, from the Pirelli tires C5, 4 and 3 and we're currently on the C5s in qualifying as we set a purple middle sector um, through the final corner and we're gonna be going almost three times up a little Much bit of a hesitation time. on the throttle as you can hear me say there as well and yeah not a great lap we are gonna be going out again we've got two new sets for Q3 anyway still because Q1 we only used one so um, it being the softest compounds on this track, you do need two new sets for Q3 ideally because, yeah, two three tens on such a short track is a lot um, that we just gained on the That's second run. Half a tenth red. And yeah, as you can even say there, Delta was half a tenth red straight away when we started the lap, so not sure if our Delta is completely accurate, but um, we're just gonna try and improve even more. 
uh, if it is accurate. And yeah, we have gained 200, 300 since the lap started. And we're still red, so let's see if we can get into the green anyway. And as we go into almost the third sector, this is the last corner of second sector. We are up by a half a tenth actually, and again, purple middle sector. Not sure how accurate that is, because sometimes it does tend to say purple sector when it's not. Um, and it's just a PB sector, so that's a bit weird. But into the final corner we go then, and here's where we had a little bit of hesitation on the previous lap. And yeah, as you can see there, that just instantly gained us half a tent. And as you can hear me say, I'm driving really bad. Um, yeah, just didn't get into quite a nice rhythm yet. As uh, Thomas Gall went almost one tent faster. Uh, Rice Linton, Ismail Fassi, Daniel Kilson, Joshi Dovo out in Q2. Um, and yeah, we're only one tenth away from getting knocked out as well, so very close. As per usual in Austria, it being a very short track, the lap times are always very close. Ikebeina out in Q2 as well. Um, but now Q3 is where it's all going to matter for us. Track position not as important around Austria, to be honest. Um, you can win races here from pretty far back, so in case we do mess up qualifying, that's kind of okay. We can get away with it. First Q3 run here. We go through the final corner again not a great last corner could have cut the inside a little bit more but it's a 102.962 and only p2 at the moment there's still a lot of people oh, two people have some lap bumps to cross the line so we're gonna have to wait and see um, but as you can see there we're only p4 at the moment as we're gonna start our last lap so let's see if we can gain some more positions here full send for this final lap. Decent banker on the board. And now it's time to go maximum attack into turn one. Breaking at 70 meters. And unfortunately, a big slide. And we're already one and a half tenths down after turn one. But we're just going to keep pushing. Uh, never know if we can somehow um, gain some time back. Again, I 200 loss. I had a good Q3. Or at least a good final Q3 lap. And yeah, another 200 loss through the hairpin. It's just not ideal, is it? But again, we're just going to keep pushing and see if we can maybe improve a position. Um, and yeah, two, 700 gain through that corner there. And we're just going to keep pushing flat out again. 200 gain. We just keep finding time as Bari goes to P1. And now we're suddenly only half a 10 down after being two tens down through the hairpin. Uh, and yeah, it's just maximum attack here. We've got nothing to lose anymore. Lap is messed up anyway. And we've somehow gone green by 300. Fuck's sake, man. And yeah, we've just thrown away a potential pole position there. Unfortunately. Um, so frustrating. Only P5 after being two tens down through turn one. Uh, yeah, on to the race we go. We're going to be starting on the hearts. Um, a lot of different strategies possible around Austria. Soft, medium, hard, medium, hard, soft, soft, hard. You name it, it's all possible. But we're going to be starting on the hearts. Here we go. Our favorite strategy. Um, and yeah, on Austria I felt like that was the best choice. Some medium runs around us though, so we're going to have to watch out for them at the race starts. P5 it is. And off the line we go. You can see Patrick Sipos on the inside getting a much better launch of the line on those mediums and yeah we just boxed in a little bit in turn one we go around the outside though and carry more speed and actually managed to keep um, p5 for now um, but yeah i'm not gonna be fighting a fight we're gonna be losing in these opening laps anyway and again just choosing the outside line not fighting patrick too hard and yeah using a bit of our battery here to make sure we um don't get swallowed up by the pack and yeah Oat is now going down the inside of us as well on the mediums. And yeah, unfortunately just a lot of medium runners around us. And yeah, they're just going to be faster in those first few laps. Uh, we're going to have to pick our fight smart. Not burn through our entire ERS. And at the same time not just completely get swallowed up by everyone behind. So, uh, top two hearts. Yeah, as you can uh, hear my engineer say, top two hearts. And... Then it's just very mixed through the field, but more medium than hard runners, I should say. And Alvaro Caraton behind right behind us. On mediums as well. um, so yeah, a lot of medium runners behind us as well. We've got Alvaro behind us on mediums. And kind of planned on letting him by, but then 
putting a big fight up against Ismail because he's our championship rival. We kind of want to bother him as much as we want. Uh, or as much as possible. As, yeah, as much of a... As much poor it sounds, or bad it sounds. Um, we are not fighting anyone apart from Ismail in this championship. And we're gonna put up a big defense against him. Uh, even if we do lose a lot of ERS or positions, um, we just need to try and make sure he loses it as well. Um, because yeah, he's our championship rival in WR. Um, so yeah, we are on the hearts and actually sending him down instead of Alvaro. Didn't even want to send it, but it was kind of the scenario of... I got my ERS right. Um, if I stayed behind, then I'm gonna get attacked by Ismail, and that's why I'm going in the attack now on Alvaro into turn number four. And around the outside, we got slightly more traction and momentum on the outside, but yeah, we just can't quite get far enough ahead. And we're gonna have to give up that fight for now. We used a bit of our ERS there, but that's fine. Considering we are in such a DRS train, we can kind of just recharge so fast with those three DRS zones and being in the slipstream. Lap number 12 now then. Cars ahead fighting. Alvaro and Patrick Sipos, they are on the same strategy. You can see the gap. Uh, we just closed and they're breaking. Um, and that just happens every lap because the, the field just bunches up in that corner all the time. So even if you've got a big gap ahead of you, you tend to close that by the time you get to the apex. As Patrick and Alvaro still going side by side. As we are almost on a 100% ERS again. We're just gonna sit back here and watch this unfold. Alvaro and Patrick going side by side into the next left. And Patrick gets pushed a little bit off track. And I decided to straight away go on the attack and take advantage of that scenario. Use a bit of my battery to make sure I keep track position and not get re overtaken straight away. So up to P6 again we go. And we've only lost one position basically, even though we started on the hard compound tires. Now, Albert Thomas. Deep don't have battery. Uh, where's no battery? Don't have battery. Okay, yeah. Uh, Thomas and Barry though in P1 and 2 on the hard so they're on the same strategy as us and we kind of have to Once these guys start boxing like here on lap 16 have to close that gap to the top two so we make sure we get close behind them and Get the DRS basically so that's why we're pushing a little bit here on the battery You can see Otis is doing the same ahead of us, but he's on the mediums and on a different strategy He's gonna have to go either to the hards or the softs as I said before both possible um, but Best if drivers who were on the mediums in for now. If Otis wants to go to the softs, he's going to have to go yeah. until at least lap 20, I reckon. Maybe lap 21. Uh, could be going earlier, but I think that's not a very serious strategy, to be honest. Or not at least one that can give him a podium or a race win. And he is currently in P3, so he can fight for that win at the moment if he gets it right. But uh boxing at the end of lap 17 and that means he is gonna be going for the hearts and we are gonna be going for the mediums we are not gonna go for the softs um i don't want to lose too much track position um and yeah if we stay out two more laps we can go for the uh, mediums um if we want to go softs as i said earlier we're gonna have to be going lap 21 to uh, or 23 as uh, barry and thomas both faked going into the, into the box I decided to do the exact opposite. We're in a 100% ERS, and that means we can go straight away on the attack once we come out of the box on a fresh set of medium. 17 laps to the end. Yep. Bit of a stretch. Uh, just two medium runners will be ahead of you. As you can see. Um, oh no, just the one actually. Should be ahead of Bent. Otis, Alvaro, and all those medium runners did it at the start as well. Went until lap 16, 17, so we should be able to easily do it as well. It's just, do we have the pace in the last three laps on that set of mediums? 17 laps, 100% DRS, and straight out of the box, we're going to be using the battery to close up to the cars ahead and make moves ASAP before uh, our tires start dropping off. As they're on the hearts, relatively to us, they're going to be getting faster and faster. Lap 22 now, um, three laps into this stint, and we're going to be trying to get past Iker Baena who is on the hard side of us and he knows that yeah he's in a slightly different fight at the moment so we're gonna be pulling out of the slipstream don't want to use too much of our battery though because we're gonna need that to get past the guys ahead we got Otis on the hearts ahead of us trying to get past Daniel Kelsen 
Um, he was on the mediums as well, but he just boxed quite a bit earlier. And because it's the softest compounds available, the undercut is quite strong. So um, if you box two laps earlier, two you get earlier, right? like a three second undercut. But as I've said many times before, a big undercut also means a big tire difference later yep, on in the race. Yeah, both had two laps earlier. Um, and yeah, as you can hear my en engineer say, Daniel Kjeldsen, two laps earlier than us. So he's going to be doing... 80. Uh, he's going to be doing 19 laps on a set of mediums. And that is going to be a little bit trickier um, pace-wise. So uh, let's see if we can get past Otis here. You can see he's using his battery. We are not. Uh, we need to save it. We need to make the right moves at the right time. And you can see the gap we just closed. We've got so much more grip. We're going to be turning on the battery out of turn one. But so is Otis. And he is defending this at the moment. So that is very frustrating. He goes to the inside. We go to the outside. But we just box in a little bit at the moment. Patrick had a big slide up front. And yeah, we just can't get past at the moment. This is not ideal for our chase to the front again. Um, and again, a big slide up front. I was trying to avoid it and go around the outside of this lot, but squeezed a little bit under the grass and just no way through at the Hold moment. The However, we're going to go around the outside in the next left-hander and uh, keep it there in the next left-hander. Daniel trying to have a little look down the inside of Otis. We get squeezed a little bit off track, but we're going to try and go down the inside of Otis into the second last corner. But, oh my yeah, God. we had to... Take avoiding action there. Uh, not a great corner to go side by side, to be honest. But one position gained only. And we, he did use like 30% ERS. But so did the rest, to be honest. So, yeah, not ideal, but not terrible either. Uh, once again, we're going to go on the attack into turn number three. Otis um, 40 exit. And yeah, as you can imagine, they say Otis actually used more than us on the previous lap. And he realized as well that he was fighting a losing battle. Tom trying to go down the inside of Patrick Seepels. We are in the slipstream. Going to use our battery to perhaps go for a double move into turn four. Around the outside, we get squeezed onto the curb a little bit. But we're going to be breaking much later. And up to P3 we go. Around the outside, more momentum on the exit. And we managed to clear Patrick. But we are a little bit low on battery. So that's no ideal. Um, but yeah, we just oh, need to get track point. position at the moment. We can worry about ERS later. Yes, um, Ishmael 35, Alvaro 65. And yeah, as you can hear my engineer say there, they're much higher on battery because they've been leading their teammates, of course, and they've been 1 2. So let's see if Ishmael, you can pressurize. Alvaro 3. Let's see if you can pressurize them into a mistake, perhaps. 11 laps to go here. They are much higher battery because see how much less grip they have on those hearts. Uh, they had the advantage of the mediums earlier on. We got the advantage now and we went longer. So we're going to try and go for a move down the inside in turn three. We get squeezed onto the green part. Three wide is no ideal here. Um, he's now wisely backed out of that one. Um, and yeah, Alvaro not getting DRS here. Letting us pass. And yeah, he was vulnerable there. And letting us pass so he can get DRS on the next lap. He knew uh, that we were going to pull a gap here in the middle sector. And I was thinking about perhaps breaking the DRS. But it is so tricky. Because if we use our remaining 35% ERS here. I think so. And we don't break out. Then we're going to be in big trouble. Um, because then we're going to be very vulnerable. Versus the people who've got DRS. So I decided to just... Not do that. Save our battery. Um, we are ahead of our championship rival, Ismail Fassi. You can see he has rolled back to P5. And we've got uh, Barry Borman behind us now. So it, it, it is a bit annoying. Um, if I was not in a championship fight, I would have fully gone for it and tried to break the DRS. Um, but with only like five rounds to go, we got a 12 point lead sometimes we just have to play the championship game and this is one of them uh, if it was a one-off race every single time I would have fully drained that battery and tried to get out of the arrest but I'll break full battery as well just zero wet this time I just could not take the risk and lap 34 we're gonna get Thomas down the inside in turn three however we are gonna get the DRS on the next rate and move back into P1 and Ideally, we're just going to keep doing this. We can't 
uh, stay behind. Um, however, this time we could because Barry was too far back to go for a move into I'm turn four. Into move and now. yeah, as you can hear me say, we might get forced into a move here now because Barry is closer this yeah, time Barry around. Away. But I don't want to use my battery and save it for the last lap. But now we're going to be going three wide into the next corner. Three wide, lads, come on. And I had to back out of that one because, yeah, three wide through yeah, there. That was either that or getting taken out, I think so. Three wide through that hairpin yeah. does not work. And yeah, I should have just either gone for the move or um, oh completely backed out. And this was kind of a yeah, half committed face. move for me. And that was a big mistake because now we're down in P4. Honestly, perhaps better being in P4 than in P1. Um, but yeah, I would have ideally been in P2, to be honest. And Number 68. Oh my god. Wait. 68, okay. And yeah, as you can hear my engineer, all of our own 68% battery. We probably still have more grip, but the tire advantage has faded off. So, no ideal. Um, but yeah, we're still going to try and get onto the podium here in the last lap of the race. Hope there is some kind of incident ahead. And we're going to be draining the battery into turn three to try and go for a move on Alvaro ahead of us. No way past at the moment. Alvaro has a little look into turn three. Can't find a way through at the moment though. And let's see if we can go for a move into turn four, perhaps with more ERS. And in the slipstream, you can see Alvaro's flashing. We go around the outside in turn four. We're gonna be side by side at the apex. He leaves us the space, but unfortunately, I just got slightly too much end this So once again, we go on the attack into the next left hander. Alvaro goes a little bit deep. We go for the switchback, turn on our battery and go down the inside in the next left hander. Unfortunately, didn't quite make the move stick. And now we've got Duncan behind us on a three second penalty. Um, but we just need to make sure to stay ahead in case it does get removed. Maybe we can get a good exit here, but yeah, not enough, unfortunately. And yeah, that lap 35 mistake of going for a half committed move cost us uh, a shot at a win. Um, should have either gone past Thomas into turn three or stayed behind. But yeah, going around the outside, not getting DRS um, cost us a shot at a win. It was the best thing to back off and not make it three wide because Thomas and Barry are quite far behind in the championship. Um, Barry actually only did two races so yeah we as I said earlier on in the video had, just had to play the championship game and extend our lead uh, to 20 points now 8 point gain this race and yeah we just need to keep doing that um, race after this is Zandvoort and then after that there's 3 more races so 4 more races on the calendar and we just need to keep that uh, a gap in the championship ideally and yeah another 8 point gain, 20 point gain, or 20 point gain in the last two races now, so that's beautiful, and we extended the championship lead, and that's the aim, um, we just need to keep doing that, hope you guys enjoyed this video, nonetheless, make sure to like and subscribe, and see you guys next time, ciao. Yeah, yeah, yeah,